Hi everyone, my name is Anuj Jindal. I welcome you back to my channel. Today I want to talk about analysis of mock. The exam is coming up and therefore the right way to analyze all the mocks is as important or I would say even more important than actually writing the mock. And therefore in order to help you understand and apply the right way of analyzing mocks, I am today talking, uh, going to talk about two things. Number one, I will give you a six base classification wherein there is a division of every question into six types that can be done after you have taken a mock. For example, question number one, I attempted it and after submitting the mock, I want to analyze and understand whether I did it right to actually attempt that question or not. It was a right decision or a wrong decision. If it was a wrong decision, what was the underlying reason? behind me taking that wrong decision of marking that question's answer. All this analysis is not very difficult and not very time consuming. You just need to understand and learn the right way of analyzing mock. In order to help you do that, first of all, I'll explain you, to you this six parameter based classification and using this six parameter based classification and using the previous year book of RBA examination for phase two and phase one that I have recently launched. It's available on Amazon. You can very easily identify whether you're going in the right direction after having taken a mock or you're going in the wrong direction. Don't worry, it sounds all too fancy and something new that you have to learn, but there's nothing new in this to learn. It's very, very simple. You just have to open up your eyes and ears and listen to me and then apply it in your mocks yourself. Okay, so let's start. First of all, let me help you understand what is this six parameter based classification of analyzing mocks. So there are six divisions into which every question can be put. Every question can form a part of these, any of these six parameters. Now, once you attempt a question, you either answer that question or you don't answer that question. You don't do anything else, right? So you either don't answer that question or you either answer that question. That is very simple. If you answer that question, there are four conditions or situations that you will see. The first is you know the question and the answer and you answer it correctly. And if the question's answer that you are analyzing lies in this, then you give yourself a pat on the back and you move ahead. It's good. You should be doing this more often, right? You want to know the questions and you want to be able to answer them correctly. The second one, however, is that you know the answer of that question. You have read about the question as well, the answer as well, the topic as well, but even then you end up answering it incorrectly. Now, there are various reasons that might be there behind it, but two major reasons that apply to this kind of a situation is whether either you did a silly mistake or you were anxious at that time and therefore you read the question incorrectly, you applied the question incorrectly, you understood the question incorrectly, or even after knowing it, you answered it incorrectly. So this is the second situation that might arise. The third situation is that you don't know the answer to that question, but even then you answered it correctly. Even then you landed up answering it correctly. You had no idea or you had very little idea. Now it might be a fluke. In that case, you have to be concerned because you don't want to rely on flukes in the final exam. So you want to minimize these flukes, but it might also be a common sense. If you have actually applied common sense in order to answer it correctly, it is good. You should be doing it more often, but you should be very clear when you are answering it, whether it was a fluke or it was common sense. I hope this makes it clear. The fourth situation that might arise is you did not know the answer. And even then you answered it incorrectly because all these four situations are the ones where you answered a question. You did not know, but even then you answered it and you answered it incorrectly. Now this is stupid. You have to try and minimize this stupidity in order to maintain accuracy in your final examination. I hope this is clear. So these are the four situations that might arise when you have answered a question in your mock. There might also be a situation where you have not answered a question and there are two further situations that might arise. You did not know about it and you did not answer it, which is good. 
you don't know something you don't want to answer it incorrectly and lose for 25 percent marks out there so this is good but at the same time you have to tell yourself to learn it because ignorance is not an excuse you cannot say that i did not know and i did not answer so there's nothing wrong with that i was being smart you were being smart but at the same time you don't know that question and yet that question has been asked in a mock which means it is relevant which means you have to learn it to make sure that if from the same topic a question is asked in the final exam you are able to answer it i hope you get it so this is the learning that you get from here that i have to know about this topic and not only about this question the last one is that you know the answer but even then you don't answer it you knew the answer and this happens very often and the major reason is anxiety there are also situations where you feel after the exam when you're analyzing it that i was so stupid of not having answered this question i knew it my heart was telling me to answer it but even then i did not answer it so that is stupidity but the real reason behind that stupidity is often anxiety try and gap grab hold of that anxiety and make sure that you don't have to repeat it again you don't end up in that anxiety again and again the moment moment you start analyzing and understanding that you were anxious in this question automatically in future questions future mocks that anxiety will start to reduce it's very important to understand that you were indeed anxious okay i hope this is clear so we have understood uh, these are the six parameters that might arise that will arise and this is how you analyze mock now let me take you to the second part of this session where i want to pick up one question each and explain to you how all these six parameters will arise one by one using my past year paper book jo maine previous year paper ki book aapko dikhai thi i am using the pdf copy of the same book and using that i will be teaching you and telling you and discussing with you today how uh, all these six situations might arise in six different questions that will also give you an idea and more clarity about uh, you know how these six situations might actually arise in the real examination let's come to the first one which is no you know something and you answered it correctly now that is good there's nothing wrong with that question number 26 is the one that explains it clearly you know it and you answered it correctly k c now this question talks about sukanya samriddhi yojana which is a very popular simple scheme which is also learned in your Uh, government scheme documents very often it is always talked about in government scheme documents and at the same time the 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 different options that you have been given here the statements that you've been given here are also very simple they're not very convoluted they're not something out of the world uh, you will find it in majority of the government scheme documents and you will be able to answer it correctly so this is something that you certainly know about and this is something that you will be able to answer correctly once you know about know enough about sukanya samriddhi yojana you don't have to know a lot about this scheme to be able to answer it correctly so this is the first one which is good question number 27 and 28 also are similar in nature let me take you through those as well now this question is about a scheme identify scheme mentioned in the above passage the scheme talks the the question talks about pm kisan talks about farmers and farmers getting 6000 rupees per annum very simple to understand anybody who had read pm kisan would be able to answer it this talks about airports and talking about biometric boarding if you have traveled in the last one or one and a half year anywhere through a flight you would be able to identify it without any uh, problem this question talks about digi yatra again very simple even if you have not traveled the scheme is often talked about in government scheme documents and therefore you will not find it difficult to answer this so these three questions were the ones where you knew the answer very high chances if you had read decently and at the same time you were also able to answer it correctly so very simple very straight forward let's come to the second situation that might arise and that is question number 21 you know but at the same time you answer it incorrectly because either of because of anxiety or or because of silly mistake now this is a question that lies there question number 21 it's about sovereign gold bond scheme it's a detailed question now sovereign gold everybody knows about sovereign gold bond scheme everybody has heard about people investing in sovereign gold bond scheme and therefore you feel that you should be you should be able to answer this question 
so you don't know you uh, know about this questions answer but even then you answer it incorrectly why <coughs> either because of anxiety or because of silly mistake now in this question you will not see silly mistake happening but you will see anxiety playing its role how you've heard about the scheme you feel that you should be able to answer this this question otherwise you're stupid otherwise your preparation is in vain because you have prepared so hard and therefore you should be able to answer this question but the questions options are so convoluted are so minute in their details that majority of the students would have answered it incorrectly okay it says these bonds are not sold through offices of uh, scheduled foreign banks now it does not talk about scheduled commercial banks but specifically foreign banks that confuses the hell out of any student option 3 a certificate of holding will be issued at the redemption after 8 years common sense why would a certificate of holding be issued after redemption but even then if you don't know what a redemption is if you're not from finance background you will find it difficult to understand that option number 3 is incorrect that is why this question is difficult and even though you know it you end up answering it incorrectly because of the pressure that i should be able to answer it because i've read about this now that is anxiety the moment you identify immediately after a mock that i answered this question incorrectly because of this reason then in the next mock automatically that will not happen or it will happen less let's say in the next mock again this kind of question comes then you will be like okay it happened with me in the last mock i wanted to answer a question but i did not know the answer correctly because it was very difficult and i ended up answering it incorrectly just because of the pressure that i have to answer it i don't want to repeat the same mistake automatically the moment you know about it you will be able to stay away from that mistake i hope this makes sense let's come to the next one which is question number 14 question number 14 this is about a situation yes it's on budget it's about a situation where you don't know but you answer it correctly now this is where you don't know not known but you answer it correctly how now this question is about saptarishi seven priorities of union budget and it is about priorities given to tribal groups very few number of people actually remembered this these saptarishi or seven priorities of the government that were highlighted in the union budget but even then they're talking about tribals therefore reaching the last mile is more common sensical so you, you probably did not know about that or you did not remember it but through common sense you were able to answer it correctly there will be two reasons behind your answer either fluke or common sense if it is fluke you have to ask yourself when you are analyzing was it fluke or was it common sense if it was fluke you know that you don't have to repeat it because you don't want to rely on fluke for your success okay but if it was common sense you give yourself a pat on the back and you say well done this was the reason the reason that i thought about this was the actual reason behind uh, you know coming to that answer coming to that option and it made sense try and analyze that ask yourself whether it was a fluke or whether it was common sense now you might be thinking sir 200 questions in phase 1 how will i analyze every question like this you don't have to analyze every question if you are giving yourself one day of test and analysis combined then let's say you take 2 hours to take the test and then you take a break and then you want to use it to analyze you have the entire day to analyze the paper let's say 5 6 hours in those 5 6 hours if you are able to analyze 50 60 70 odd questions that will also do the job because you're developing a habit of understanding how is your mind working in the test what kind of decisions are you making in the test and the more self aware you are about your decisions automatically your decision making will improve you don't have to analyze every question but you don't have to analyze too less number of questions also so 60 70 questions out of those 200 will do the job i hope that makes sense let's come to the next one question number 23 so question number 23 yes pradhan mantri jan aushadhi kendra now the situation here is not known and answered incorrectly which is stupidity the fourth point the fourth situation you did not know and you ended up ended up answering it incorrectly 
Why? Why did you answer? Because of stupidity. You have to try and remove that stupidity from your next mock. Now, what kind of stupidity must have happened here? It talks about Pradhan Mantri Jan Aushadhi Kendra. We've often seen Jan Aushadhi Kendras beside hospitals in our localities. I've seen so many Jan Aushadhi Kendras and the medicines there are generic and cheaper. And therefore, you end up understanding, okay, this is how, uh, this is how the government spreads generic medicines and this is how people can use it at, at a cheaper rate, find it at a cheaper rate. So, you know about Jan Aushadhi Kendra, you've read about it. But you've not read enough about it because it's a very old scheme. And the options given here are also very detailed and convoluted. The moment you see these options, you're like, this is something that I cannot answer, but I want to answer it because I read about it a long time back. I read about, read about it. I remember it. I don't want to sound stupid to myself, feel stupid to myself, and therefore I want to answer it. But you don't know. The reality is, you don't know about that scheme because you've net not read it recently. And number one, you know that you might end up answering it incorrectly. So this is stupidity and this is something that you have to stay away from. It's an old scheme. At the same time, it was difficult. It was in news for certain things last year. That is why it was asked. If you read about that something in news, then also you might be incentivized or pushed to answer it. But it's a difficult question because the options are too difficult here. I hope that makes sense. So you don't know about it and there are high chances that you'll end up answering it incorrectly. So why waste your time and energy on trying to figure out the answer here? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Now let's come to not answered part. And for that, I'll pick up finance and management. Question number seven. Yes, uh, so there was, a, there was a paragraph here which talks about the barriers to communication and specifically the barriers faced by Rohan. Now, the paragraph gets confusing because it talks about two things. It talks about the barriers faced by Rohan and also in general the barriers that an organization faces. It talks about both the things. Okay, and now it asks you which of the following barrier is faced by Rohan. Now, the situation here is you know, but you don't answer it, which is also because of anxiety. Okay. In this, you're not answering it at all. So, you know it. You read about semantic, you read about personal, physical, physiological, organizational barriers. You know about it. But even then, you end up not answering it, getting confused. Why? Because the paragraph talks about two things. It talks about Number one, the barriers faced by Rohan, it talks about the barriers faced by organization and here you see both organization, you see personal and it talks about Rohan and it, you see semantic. So you get confused and you decide not to answer it because of anxiety. This is where your command over the subject comes into play. The reason you would not have answered something like this is you were not clear about the meaning of semantic barriers. If you were not clear about the meaning of semantic barriers, you would get confused or having an understanding of choosing the best option out here. <clears throat> personal is not incorrect because Rohan is facing a personal barrier of bad vocabulary, bad expression. But at the same time, it is a semantic barrier technically. So both are correct, but semantic is a better option. Therefore, please do not get into this stupidity because of anxiety. Because of anxiety and pressure of the exam, even after knowing something like this, you might end up not answering it, which is not right, which you have to try and reduce. And this is a prime example of how, <clears throat> where it happens. Let's come to question number 28, which will give us our last classification. This classification is not known, not answered. Aapko nahi aata tha, aapne answer nahi kiya. Aapko kyun nahi aayega ye? Question number 28 talks about which of the following is an example of alternative sources of finance, ASF. Now, if you have read about alternative sources of finance, which is a part of the syllabus of finance, then you will be able to answer it correctly. But there are a lot of students out there who end up reading a lot of things, but end up ignoring a good part of the syllabus. An alternate source of finance, because it is mentioned in a corner in finance syllabus, a lot of students end up ignoring it. What is ASF? Uski piche ki theory kya hai? Uske andar kya kya aata hai? They end up ignoring those things. Okay. Higher purchase, alternate source of finance, 
uh, you have forfeiting, uh, you have leasing, you have financial lease, operating lease, ऐसी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं So if you don't know enough about alternate source of finance and you don't answer it, something like this crops up. Okay. But your objective is not just to ignore this. Your objective is to try and know about this topic because it is directly coming from the syllabus. Therefore, knowing about it becomes very important. Okay. So this is all. This is where we come to the end of this session. I hope it was useful. In this session, I want to talk about the six parameters through which you can classify and analyze your mocks better. And I believe that through these six examples picked up from previous year paper books, you will now be able to analyze your mocks better and uh, be able to use your mocks for your betterment before your final RBA 2024 examination. If you have any comments, any doubts, you can put it in the uh, comment section below. I'll try and answer them as soon as possible. I'll see you very soon with another such session. Till then, all the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Jai Hind.